Hello and welcome to today's Global Sign webcast on cloud-based digital signatures. I'm Dan Farrell with the Global Sign marketing team, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. I'd like to take just a moment to introduce our presenter, Jose Sway Smith. Jose is one of our fantastic sales engineers here at Global Sign and has been in the industry for five years. Today, he's going to be discussing the need for digital signatures and how the latest cloud technologies are eliminating the barriers to adoption making it easier than ever to deploy legally acceptable, trusted digital signatures. And I'll turn it over to Jose. Thanks, Daniel. So to begin with, we all know the typical discussion about going paperless. A few years ago, this was part of the conversation, but at this point, everyone understands why you don't want to deal with paper. It's time consuming, inefficient, wasteful, you know the deal. People don't want to deal with paper and many workflows and processes have been brought online as a result. There is one area of document processing that continues to be an issue, how to deal with signatures. Contracts, invoices, loan applications, engineering drawings, lab documents, virtually every business across every industry deals with signatures at some point. Hence, most of them are wondering, what are the current options available? Now, you may be thinking, don't we already have an answer for this? There are a ton of electronic signatures options out there. You're not wrong about that, but it's not that simple. There are a few major areas of confusion as barriers to electronic signature adoption. People want an electronic signing solution, but that could be confusing. There's the technology itself, with a range of different solutions to different problems, making it hard to figure out which one you actually need. Think about compliance and legality. You need to make sure that whatever you're using is a legally accepted alternative. And of course, you have the topic of deployment. First of all, electronic signatures is kind of an umbrella term. It includes a wide variety of signing actions and assurance levels. It goes from simply checking a box, entering your initials, typing your name, inserting an image of your signature, to using cryptographic based digital signature. This can make it confusing when trying to choose a potential solution. So how do you know which one you need? Well, depending on your case, it might be enough to just collect someone's initials, but if you need higher level of assurances or need to meet certain regulations, you need to be more careful. This brings me to another point of confusion, the difference between electronic and digital signatures. And allow me to make this very clear. These two terms are definitely not the same. Digital signatures are the type of electronic signature based on cryptographic technology. So what does the underlying cryptography actually mean for you? How does this translate to your business? You will know that the document is authentic and comes from a verified source because a third party verified the identity that is used to apply the signature. You can actually interact with the signature and see more details about the signer's identity. No repudiation. The signature is applied with user's cryptographic private key, so unless the key has been compromised, the signer cannot deny they signed the document. Document integrity. One of the most important features of digital signatures. So thanks to a hashing mechanism, which is a unique code derived from the document, this will let you know that the document has not been modified since the moment it was signed. Timestamping. Third-party timestamps can be incorporated into digital signatures. This way, you know for certain that the signature was applied when it actually was. Now, speaking about compliance. While it's great that new regulations are emerging to help define what type of signatures are acceptable and that EIDAS is actually establishing international standards, these regulations still don't go into specifics about which technologies or vendors you should use. So, you know what signatures you need, but not necessarily which types meets those criteria and where to go and get them. Fortunately, there are some common points. If you start to read through the regulations, you will see some of the same language saying signatures must be unique to the signer and capable of identifying the signer. Digital signatures achieve this because they are a link to your unique third-party verified identities with this information embedded in the signature itself. Signatures must be under sole possession of the signer. Again, this comes back to the private key I mentioned earlier. Digital signatures are applied with the individual's private key. So 
as long as this is kept private, you know this, the signature was actually applied by that person. The signature has to be linked to the data so that any change to the data is detectable. As I mentioned earlier, part of the signature verification process involves checking the document's contents before and after the signature was placed thanks to the hashing. And some regulations mentioning timestamping, including a trust third party timestamp will help you meet this requirement. Somewhat related to compliance, or at least to general acceptance, is the concept of public trust. So let's take a look at the document that was signed with an untrusted signature. The recipient gets a clear warning on the top of the document stating that the signature has problems and therefore you cannot really trust it. On the other hand, a publicly trusted signature clearly shows that it's valid. Public trust comes down to the roots of the certificate authority where you get your credentials from. There are two major roots tours for documents. You got the Adobe Authorized Trust List, AATL, which is a successor of the Certified Document Services, CDS, and the Microsoft Root Trust List. In order for your signatures to have a public trust and be automatically trusted, the CA's roots needs to be included into these programs. In here, you can see one of the major points that set digital signatures apart from other e-signatures. Above, we see the public trust we discussed showing it as valid, and you can also see the signer's name plus time and date it was signed. As a side note, the looks of the signature can be customized. So for example, you could include an image of your written signatures if you wish, or perhaps a professional stamp instead. Clicking the signature brings up more details about the signature. Again, you can clearly see that the signature is valid and the identity behind it. But you can also see that the document hasn't been changed since it was signed, and more details about the embedded timestamp. At this point, you can actually dig down even further into the credential that was used to apply the signature, who issued it, when it was, when it was issued, etc. So, based on what we have seen, we can conclude that digital signatures are a great option for those of you looking for an alternative to your paper-based signature workflow. But why isn't everyone already using them? Let's look into some of the barriers that have prevented adoption in the past and how the latest technologies are knocking them down. Honestly, one of the biggest barriers in the past was the market confusion I mentioned before, with so many e-signatures options, which one is the best for you? Well, the new regulations and standards give you a better overview of what you really need, plus the education efforts from companies like us and others out there. But beyond that, even people who wanted to use digital signatures have some reservations thanks to hardware requirements. Adobe's trust program which perhaps is the most important given most people use it for PDFs, requires signing credentials to be stored on FIPS compliant cryptographic hardware, which are typically USB tokens or hardware secure models, HSMs. This represents a big investment in hardware and maintenance, plus on management if you're using USB tokens. Uh, this by far is the most common complaint because it affects everyone who wants to digitally sign. Another pain point has been on the document workflow or management systems. You want a full workflow that you can customize and automate to make things easier for everyone. Usually this was a tricky point for digital signatures because in order to integrate the signatures into the workflow, there was often custom development work and cryptography expertise required from your end, or you have to outsource it to integrators, which of course led to more investments. But fortunately, there's a better way. The answer to all of these problems I mentioned lies in the cloud. Moving to the cloud eliminates all the headaches I just mentioned. In particular, Global Science Digital Signing Services, DSS, gives you everything you need to apply legally admissible and compliant digital signatures in one cloud-based service. You have the digital signing process itself, and note, the document itself and its contents never actually leave your environment. 
the signing service only receives the hash of the document. Issuance of signing credentials or certificates, which can be issued to individuals or on a department level, say if you want to sign something from the legal or finance department. Private key storage, that hardware require I mentioned earlier. No more tokens or HSMs to invest or manage. Private keys are securely stored on Global Science Cloud HSMs. Trusted timestamping service. There's a high demand for signatures to be timestamped due to compliance reasons or just higher assurance for the parties involved. In general, people want to know that the time associated with the signature can be trusted. Finally, revocation checking. Essentially, this is the part of the signature validation and the most important for long-term validation. Meaning, the signature stays valid even after the signing credentials expired or is revoked. So long as the credential was valid at the time of signing, the signature will remain valid. DSS is already integrated into many popular platforms. It goes from general signing platforms to specific business applications and, work and document workflows. Plus, we continue working on expanding this list. Basically, you just need an account with a platform and a DSS account, and you can start signing, just like that. To show you how simple the signing process can be, here's an example within Adobe Sign. Let's start in the main screen where you can start the signing process. Here you can just enter the email address of the signer and of yourself if you want to have a copy of it. Later, just upload the document to be signed. After processing the document, you'll have the option to include a digital signature to it by just dragging a box to the desired location of the signature. The recipient will receive a link to sign the document on their email and can easily click on the box to digitally sign it. Just select Global Sign on the list of providers, enter your credentials of your enterprise directory service, and after you'll receive a PIN code for authenticating the signature later. You will then see the certificate which you will be used to sign and you can enter a signing reason if desired. Now you can just confirm and enter the PIN code to complete. And that's it. You now have a signed PDF. You can straight download a copy from it and see the finalized document. Our goal is to make digital signatures accessible to everyone and we think a cloud-based offering is a solution for that. All right, thanks, Jose. Next up, we've got three of our most frequently asked questions on the digital signing service, or DSS, as we like to call it. So question number one, what do you need to use DSS? So in order to use DSS, you'll need a signing platform or application, and this can be one that we're already integrated with, like Adobe Sign. Or if you have your own application that you've created and want to build digital signatures in, you can do the integration yourself using our simple REST API. For example, our customer DocuFirst provides electronic loan application software, and they integrate with digital signing service. So all forms and applications created within the software are digitally signed. You'll also need a DSS account. Your account is configured based on the signature volume and the identities of your signers. That is, do you need your employees to sign or just department level signatures? The next question is, what are the next steps if you want to start using DSS? So this depends on whether you're using a signing application that we have already integrated with, like Adobe Sign, or if you have your own application that you'd like to add digital signatures to. If you're using an existing integration, you need an account with the signing application and an account with us. If you have your own application and want to integrate DSS, we can share the API documentation and more information about getting this going. Either way, give us a call and we'll get you started on the right path. And the last question is, do digital signatures comply with EIDAS? So GlobalSign offers a full range of digital signing solutions meeting the requirements for advanced signatures under EIDAS. 
and we're currently finishing up our audit to be a qualified trust service provider in the coming months. And that's it. Thanks so much for checking out this webcast on Global Signs Digital Signing Service. If you have any questions or want to get started, check out our website at www.globalsign.com. Thank you for watching. For more Global Sign videos on identity, cybersecurity, and PKI, please follow one of the links on your screen. To keep up to date with the latest content, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.